Hello everybody, my name is Niklas and in this video we will talk about PlayFab and try to implement authentication from PlayFab. So in case you haven't heard about PlayFab before, PlayFab is a complete backend service for our live games. So they provide real-time analytics and all kinds of real-time live operations statistics. You can also send push notifications to your users, you can create matchmaking rooms and you could do a lot of other cool stuff as well. But before we will tackle that, we need to talk about authentication because of course your users have to log in before they can start using all of these nice features. And in this video, we will take the most basic part of authentication and then in later videos we will expand on it with more advanced features. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about what this PlayFab series is about on my channel. So we will only make use of what you can do for free, so you won't have to pay anything to either PlayFab or Unity. And the features that you can get for free are all of these, and as you can see there are actually quite a lot of things you can do already in the free tire. So of course we will talk about player profiles, and we will do that today already, because we have to talk about player profiles when we talk about authentication. You will also be able to do content management like inventory for your players. In-game commerce is basically just in-app purchases and virtual currency, and we will do that in a later video. We have real-time analytics, so you can see in real-time what your users are doing, and then use that to improve your, your game and its behavior. We also have support for leaderboards already, and that's pretty cool, and of course we will try to create our own cool leaderboard. We have receipt validation, custom server logic, and documentation and forms, and these I won't talk about right now, but Hopefully we'll get to that in a future video. All right, I think we are ready to go now. So the first thing you have to do is sign up on PlayFab. And when you've signed up, just log in, which I'll do now. And maybe you don't have a studio, then you just have to create a new studio. For our authentication provider, you'll select PlayFab and then just the studio name. Once you've created your studio, you can create your first title. As you can see, you already have two titles here. When you create a new title, you have to select the genre, your modes, the target marketplaces, and monetization. And of course, for this test, it doesn't really matter. So you can put in whatever you want. The only thing you have to do is select the name, and then just create the title. Once you have created the title, let's go into the title. And you can see here that it's probably a bit overwhelming. There's a lot of things here to think about it, but for this video, we'll only need the players and the settings. So now that we have created a PlayFab account and set up the first game, it's time to go into Unity and create a project. So what I want you to do is to fire up Unity and create an empty 2D project. So I'm going to be working on my own project right here called Name the Color, which is a game I'm working on, and I'm integrating PlayFab. And in that process, I learned how to do authentication, and that's why I'm teaching it to you now. So there is some stuff here that you won't need, so don't worry about it. Basically, only the thing that has anything with the PlayFab to do, you have to worry about. So how do we get this PlayFab Edit Extensions and PlayFab SDK? Well, that's quite easy. Uh, Microsoft has a Getting Started Guide for Unity 3D and PlayFab, which you can see right here. And inside this Getting Started Guide, there is a link to download and import the PlayFab Unity Editor Extensions package. So what you have to do is download this package and then import it into your Unity project. And then what you will be able to do is you will have this new menu item with a dashboard where you will get access to the game. But also we will have this PlayFab Editor Extensions and you probably don't have an SDK set up, but here you can install the SDK right from this menu item. And when you've installed that, go into the settings and select your studio, select the title for your name. And for the request type, you should use Unity Web Request. And here you can see the developer seek. So hopefully you will have no problems with this setup. So before we are getting started with the coding, let's just quickly talk about the best practices for logging in using PlayFab. So PlayFab have two terminologies for logging in. They have anonymous login 
also called silent login and the key aspect here is that they require no input from the user at all and they might not even know that they are logged in. The another method is recallable login and a recallable login is a login where the user have logged in using email or password or using uh, another provider like Facebook or Google. And you might wonder, well, what are the difference between these two and when would you do what? So basically, you should always just log the user in using an anonymous mechanism so that they will get to keep their progress in case they delete their game and then install it at a later point on the same device. So basically, by using an anonymous login mechanism, they will get to keep their progress because it will be on their device ID. Of course, if they want to play the game on multiple different devices, then you should suggest to them that they use a recallable login mechanism. Because if they use recallable login, then you can use that login on multiple devices. Yes, I know we've been talking a lot and we have done no coding at all, but that's because it's important to understand what we want to do and it also makes it a lot easier to actually code the things that we want to code. So this is a very nice flowchart developed by Playfab suggesting the best practice for logging in. And I think that we should just go through it once and then we can start on with the coding. So we start up here in the beginning where the user loads the game. The first thing we do is check if we have a stored login. So basically, have we already logged in before using a recallable login mechanism? If we have, then we go this way. If we haven't, then we go this way. So let's just assume that we haven't, because that will be the case for the first time. Okay, if we haven't, we will do a platform check. So basically, we will check inside Unity are we running Android? Are we running on an iOS device? Or are we running on anything else? And based on that, we will do three different kinds of logins. And they are all anonymous. After that, then we will have a new PlayFab ID created. And we will also be authenticated. The part down here, we won't do that in this video. We will do that in the next video. So for now, let's just forget about this. Okay, so now we have run through the case that we don't have a stored login. Okay, so let's assume that we have a stored login. Well, then we can request the user on which type of login they want to use. For this video, we will use the most simple one is with login using the PlayFab user. And when we use the PlayFab user, they will provide a password and an email. And we will be authenticated immediately using the store play five user. Okay, so I think this is a lot of talking and we should get to the coding. So let's get right to it now. Okay, finally we are inside Unity. So the first thing we will do is just create a canvas right here. And let's put in some text and we will call that play fab ID text some ID and I have a black background at the moment so I'll make the text rightish center it and make it bigger and let's just make sure that we can overflow here we have a very nice little canvas then on the canvas let's add our code so we will call it playfab authentication test Let's create that script and add it. Very nice. And as I said before, don't worry about all this other stuff. That's because I'm currently working inside the same project as my game. And that's just because I already have PlayFab set up and such. So that's not a problem. So inside here, we can start on our code. So let's first just delete this. And let's start by writing out the code in a pseudo style so we can get a feel for what we'll be doing. So we will use the start and we'll use that just to set everything up here. So if you remember this little very nice flowchart here, we will follow this flow. So basically what we'll do is that if we 
already has stored a login. So if we have stored login, that would be a method. Then we will log in with the stored login. If we don't already have a stored login, oops, else, we will silent platform, platform login. So that's the basic flow. So let's just implement these methods here, like that, like that, and like that. And let's start with has stored login. So we will save the login ID in the player prefs, which is a Unity function for saving local data. And that player pref will need an ID. So let's just create a private const here, private const, and it will be a string. And we'll call it stored login key. And let's just give the value playfab underscore login. Pretty simple. And then here for has stored login, we will figure out if we already have this value set. So start login equals to player prefs dot get string. And the thing we want to get is a start login key. And then we can set a default value, which will be an empty string. And what we can say is that if the start login is not a default value, so if, it, if it's not the default value, then we have a store login, otherwise we don't. So that's this check. And then let's go to the silent platform login. And in the silent platform login, what we had to do was to check for the platform. So that will be a switch case. So we will switch on, and then in Unity, we have access to application.platform. So we will create a switch on that. And the case of runtime platform dot iPhone player, and that's all iOS devices. And then we'll do an iOS login. Break the case that we are on Android. Then we will make a Android login method and break. And the default case is anything else. Then we'll do a desktop login and break. So let's create these methods. Create the iOS login method, the Android method, and the desktop method. And when we are creating login requests using PlayFab, then we have to have a request object. And it's a different request object for each type of login. And desktop is really the easiest one. So we we'll create here first. So we'll create a request object which is a new login with custom ID request. And we can initialize it immediately. And what we want is the title. And because we are using the PlayFab either extensions, we can get titles from the PlayFab settings object, title ID. And then we need a custom ID for this computer right here. And the way we do that is using system info that device unique identifier. Then we can set if we should create an account if a, an account does not already exist. And of course, yes, we want to do that in this case. And then we need some info request parameters. And that is if you want to have anything else received when you do the login, that can be like inventory, uh, virtual currency, or other custom data that you have on your users that you might want to get back when they are logged in. And we don't actually have anything specific right now. So we'll just get in a new object where nothing is set. And that should be fine for us. And that is this object created. So what we can do now is that we can go to the PlayFab client API and say login with custom ID. Then we will pass in the request object and then we'll get two different callbacks. We will get a callback if the login was succeeded and we will get a callback if the login was an error. So the only thing we want to do right now is just to debug log that result. So for the first callback, we will get the result and we will debug the log result and here we have access to the playfab id so let's print that out 
and for the next callback get an error and let's debug that log error error and here we have a method called generate error report which we will print and that's it for desktop login and let's carry on to android login so for android login it's a bit more difficult because the way you have to get the device id you have to use native android code but luckily google is our friend and if you search for unity android id the first result is how to get it so basically this code here will give you the android id so if you just copy this and go into android again here and paste it then we will have the android id and i'll just use var for all of these here because it looks nicer and i'll call this device id instead so here we have the device id so from now on it's actually pretty simple so as before we have to create the request object it's a new login with android device id and we will just initialize it immediately so the title id is from the playfab settings title id and android device is system info dot device model that will get the model which you can use for your analytics and search inside the playfab dashboard the os is system info dot operating system and that will get you the android version which you can also use for as an example, your app might crash more frequently on one version of Android or another. And then your Android device ID is the device ID that we used all of this above to get. And create account should be true. And for the info request parameters, we'll just create a new one as before. And that is the request object. So let's call again playfab client API dot login with Android device ID. You'll feed in the request and we'll get the same callbacks as before. So what we can do is actually just copy this code here and paste it because we want to lock the same stuff. So that's Android. So the final one here is iOS login. So let's create the request object and here we don't have to do anything fancy like we did with Android, luckily. As we log in with a uh, what's called iOS device request and we will initialize it. Title ID is equal to playfab settings.title ID. Device model is equal to system info that device model. Uh, OS is equal to system info dot operating system and device id is equal to system info that device unique identifier and then we have create account which is true and of course info request parameters is just a new info request parameters object so finally we will log in again playfab client api dot log in with ios device id the request and the exact same callback as before like this so now we have set up a very simple way to log in without a stored login so what we can do now is actually test if this is working so in unity is this clear here and what we want to do is show that id here but because we already created the debug logs we don't actually need this right now so in the next video we'll probably attach that so if you click play here we should see a callback yes we got this id here which is very nice and if i can find our playfab overview here and go into players we can see that this player has just been created so if you go into that player you should see that we have this custom ID right here and that custom ID is from this here. So basically what we have done now is that we have locked the user in without them even knowing and if they uninstall the app completely and install it again 
at a later point on the same computer, then they will get the same ID and all their progress will have been saved. So I think that's a really great feature and it's very easy to use. So I think that's plenty enough for one video. So let's continue in the next video where we'll expand on this and fill out more of this nice flowchart. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until then, have a really nice time. Goodbye.